Now let's try to verify the Stokes theorem for the situation here. So first of all, let us remind ourselves what the Stokes theorem tells us. So the Stokes theorem tells us that the line integral along a closed path is equal to the surface integral of the curl along the surface that is bound by the closed path. So in our case, let's try to calculate this term first. So obviously we need to find the curl. So let's just apply the formula. And in the bottom row, we put down the vector field, which is equal to xy in the x direction, and 2yz in the y direction, and 3zx in the z direction. And then we just do this like the normal way would treat a determinant. The derivative with respect to y, this is equal to 0. And then minus the derivative with respect to z, that's just minus 2y in the y direction. And then we minus, and then we take the derivative, and that's just 3z. We take the derivative, and that's 0. So that's in the j direction. And then for the k direction, once again, we take the derivative, that's 0. And then this derivative, that's equal to x, so minus x, k. So this is the kernel. So we found this component over here. So the second component is dA. And remind ourselves that dA is actually a vector as well. So dA is a vector that is pointing in a direction that is perpendicular to the surface. And then uh, because of the right-hand rule, because we're evaluating the line integral along this direction over here. So by the right-hand rule, the perpendicular uh, uh, the perpendicular vector we want is the one that's pointing in this direction. And in this case, it's obviously it's e equal to i, the i vector, which is pointing in the x direction, the direction of the x-axis. So actually for dA, that's equal to i times dy dz. So that is our dA. So in our integral, in our surface integral, we have, first of all, the we have the vector field, and then we call that, uh, we're evaluating this vector field in this yz plane. So in this yz plane, x is always equal to 0. So first of all, we can take away that final component over here, because this is always equal to 0. So we have 2y in the i, minus 2y in the i direction, and then minus 3z in the j direction, and then this final component is just 0, and then we take the dot product, of, of this with i dy dz. And then in our case, y is going to vary from 0 to 2, and then z is going to vary from uh, 0 to 2 minus y. So this is the bounds of the surface. So we're integrating across the surface a, and then this surface is going to be bounded by from 0 to 2 for y, and then from 0 to 2 minus y for z. So obviously this term gets eliminated because there's only the i vector. So once we take the dot product, this is negative 2y. And I'm going to integrate across dz first. And then for the bounds, uh, z varies from 0 to 2 minus y. And then y varies from 0 to 2. So at this point, this is pretty easy to evaluate. So we just do the integration with respect to z. And then for y, we have negative 4y, so that becomes negative 2y squared once we integrate it. Then we have a 2y to the power of 2, that becomes 2y to the power of 3 divided by 3. And so you get uh, 2, plus 2 times 2 times 2, that's minus 8, plus 2 to the power of 4, that's 16 over 3. So you just see this is negative 24 over 3 plus 16 over 3. So this is actually equal to negative 8 over 3. So this is the answer. So we found the uh, the expression for this right here, for this uh, surface integral. And now, in order to verify the Stokes theorem, we're going to also have to calculate this line integral.